The MGM musical Words and Music depicts the lives of the celebrated songwriting team Rogers and Hart, who created timeless standards like Blue Moon, Isn't It Romantic, My Funny Valentine, and Where or When. The film represents Hart as a ta talented and enthusiastic but vaguely troubled man who suffers an untimely death in 1943. But this was only a fraction of his story. While the real Larry Hart was a brilliant and witty life of the party, he was also a man plagued by inner demons that MGM could not have depicted in 1948, even if it inclined to do so. In his time, Larry Hart crafted lyrics that conveyed longing, heartbreak, irony, joy, and despair in music that continues to inspire us generations after his passing. With Richard Rogers to provide the melody, Larry Hart lived a life in words and music. Basically, in the 1940s, uh, Hollywood producers discovered that you could make a really successful musical film by taking a composer's life, producing a script that has basically nothing to do with that life, and putting all his songs in it, and you get a really good show that way. Either they would take a composer who had had a very kind of eventful, racy life and make it very flat, as they did at Warner Brothers with Cole Porter for Night and Day, because there was very little about Porter's life that they could actually tell. Or they had to take someone whose life wasn't all that eventful, like Jerome Kern, and fabricate all these events that never happened to make it more box office. When they got to words and music, they kind of had to do both of that because Richard Rogers, being a very private person, didn't want very much of his personal life on display. And a lot of Lorenz Hart's life could not be told in a movie in 1948. Hart was gay, he was tortured, he drank himself to death, mostly for being gay and a little bit also for being short. So he had all these frustrations that could not be spelled out in a 1948 film script. So how do they do it? Larry Hart met Richard Rogers pretty much the way you see it in words and music. It's one of the few moments in the film that actually has some relationship to actual history. They both lived in what is now Harlem. My father rang the doorbell to Larry's house, and this utterly disheveled, appalling-looking troll who <laughs> answered the door. I I don't know what my father thought, because he was rather a tidy person. They went into the back room where the piano was, and hours later, he came out and realized that he'd met the lyric writer he wanted to write with forever, possibly. The early years for both of them were frustrating, and Daddy was about to take a job in the underwear business when Garrick 80s happened, and of course it was full of hits, and they got reviews saying this bright, young, wonderful new songwriting team, and they had it made. And there followed a whole succession of wonderful, adventurous musicals in 1926. They did The Girlfriend and Peggy Ann in 1927. In 28, they did Present Arms, She's My Baby. In 29, they did Heads Up and Spring Is Here. And so they were really hot on Broadway. The bad part was when he would disappear. Rogers never knew where he would be and never knew when he would come back. You gotta pull yourself together. He was somewhat averse to working until you locked him in a room. And then he would write very quickly. But what it meant was that the music came first. The Depression had a severe effect on Broadway. And the group went out to Hollywood, Rogers and Hart, the Gershwins, Kern their time in Hollywood, Rogers said had been one of the worst times of his life. They had worked first at Paramount, and then they signed at MGM. Even though they produced some very good work, very little of it ended up on the screen. A lot of Larry Hart's love songs, Blue Moon is a good example, they aren't about falling in love, they're about being in love unhappily. And that was probably as close as he could come to being honest either with himself or with the public. He would get these fixations on chorus boys or other people who just would not find him physically appealing. Roger said he wasn't even five feet tall, very homely, and had a kind of misshapen body, almost uh, dwarf-like. He knew how unattractive he was, and it was a very painful reality for him to live with. He was kind of like the clown that got left behind when the circus left town. 
He had a wonderful, engaging, endearing quality, but he just didn't have the certain spark that attracted other people to him. He did what so many of the great artists have done, turn to liquor. You can listen to a lot of his songs and be able to tell that this was a person who had been very, very uh, miserable in love. The full-length documentary, A Life in Words and Music, is available on the Words and Music DVD from Warner Home Entertainment. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.